So, plant spacing. Why is it important? Well, in my opinion, if you know your plant spacing and plant it the same way every single time, kind of like this. This is a what I call a two by two grid on a 30 inch by 50 foot bed. So that means uh, each plant is gonna be 15 inches apart, lengthwise and widthwise. These are kale. So by knowing, I know from experience that planting kale like this gets me the highest yield on this bed. And <clears throat> that is ultimately the goal of uh, growing vegetables on a farm like this. And so it's ultimately the goal in your garden or your farm or your homestead too. And so if you know the plant spacing, what gets the highest yield, you can look at a plot of ground and be able to tell how much yield you're going to get out of say a 10 foot long piece of bed. And that helps you a lot in the planting stages of your garden. Um, and when you want to grow a certain amount of food for your family. Now, um, this is sort of a lengthy topic, so I'm kind of just gl glancing over it right now, but you know, a lot of seed packets and stuff are gonna confuse you um, if you're not used to looking at plant spacing because they'll say something like, you know, uh, 18 inches apart in rows three feet apart or something, which is kind of more of like a big scale, uh, multi-acreage kind of farm planting. It's not like small garden planting. So knowing this kind of planting for your garden, you can grow an incredible amount of food in a very small space in a very short growing season. And I actually have a video where I talk about how you can grow $1,130 worth of produce in 220 square feet using exactly this method just catered for a garden. If you're interested in that video, it'll be put somewhere around here um, and explain what I'm talking about in a lot more detail, especially the yields for certain crops. But this, for example, this bed of kale is going to get me about 50 bunches of kale per pick but I'm gonna get about four to five picks throughout the season. So that's about 250 to 300 bunches um, throughout the whole growing season. And I know that from experience now because I've kept track of the records and I know that this plant spacing gets me really big bunches of kale, which is ultimately what I want. And it's ultimately what you want in your garden too. So just a little bit of thought and effort ahead of time can get you a lot more food for a lot less effort. So perfect plant spacing like this gives you uniform crops every time. So we just planted this bok choy at six inch spacing in the paper pot transplanter. And I know from experience that that's gonna give me a perfect about four to five inch wide bulb of bok choy when it's done every single time. And I know that I'm going to fit about 360 heads of bok choy on this 50 foot bed because I'm using the, the perfect spacing grid system. And so you can use that same concept in your garden to get the exact amount of whatever crop you want in the set amount of space. Another benefit to perfect plant spacing every single time is your plants are going to grow faster. If you plant, you know, stuff like this kale too close together, it's going to be competing with the other plants for nutrients and just not grow as fast. This goes for pretty much everything, including, you know, direct seeded radishes and carrots and stuff. In general, the more space you give plants, the faster they will grow because they've got more of their own space. They're happier, basically. So, 
it's just one of the many benefits of getting the plant spacing right every single time. And once you get it down and remember it, it's not that it, you don't even have to think about it every time you plant. And drawing a grid on your beds really helps. You know, this I use a special tool called a gritter, but you can do it in another way with a, basically a stick. And it's something that I explain in the garden course that I have in the description of this video, where I explain everything you need to know from starting your garden to harvesting and storing your vegetables enough to grow a year's worth of produce in a garden about 220 square feet. And I uh, teach you a way to do this in your garden that doesn't require a special tool. So check that out in the description if you're interested in growing your own food this year. And though, even though plant spacing might seem overwhelming, it's really not that complicated. There's about three plant spacings you need to know. There's pretty much 15 inches, 10 inches, and about seven and a half inches. So that's between the different plants. <clears throat> and if you do everything in a grid, just like an Excel sheet, that's pretty easy to figure out once you know a couple of tools that I talk about in that garden course. And you can look at any bed, raised bed or not. And if you know the square footage, you can calculate how many plants you need and how much crop you're gonna get every time. And the last, but definitely not least benefit of perfect plant spacing every time is how easy it is to stay on top of the weeds. So you see this lettuce here, I'm planting it in a perfectly straight grid, seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches on this bed. And I can come every week and run a hoe through here and everything you see behind me in about 20 minutes. Because all I'm doing is I'm walking up and down with the hoe and I'm getting the weeds when they're just this big. And I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about what this bed's going to yield because I've done the bed prep right and everything. So it's just like an assembly line now. I've just got food pumping in and out of these beds. Plants are gonna grow really, really fast. And as soon as this lettuce is done, I'll be planting another crop exactly the same way with new fertility added to the bed and it just makes it so you've got this assembly line of food and a perfect predictable amount of food coming out of a set amount of space over the whole growing season this is the first crop of the year in this bed we'll get at least one more maybe two depends on how fast um you know this whole growing and harvesting process goes but that's how you can really produce a truckload of food in a small space. So if you're interested in learning a lot more of that and how to do it in your garden, highly recommend you check out my garden course in the description. It's seven hours of gardening content and I teach you how to do this exact thing I'm talking about in a 220 square foot garden where you could grow $1,100 of food your very first season. And even though it's May 10th right now, there's still plenty of time to get exactly that amount of food in your backyard, no matter where you live. If you started, in a, even in a month, you could still do it. You just have to keep having plants to put in the ground and have a system so you're not thinking about it. You're just planting and seeding every week. So hope you enjoyed that one, and we'll see you in the next one.